Should we keep our tiny teardrop RV or should we upgrade to something bigger? In today's episode, we're going to answer this question by looking at the pros and cons of our tiny travel trailer compared to larger RVs. Hey folks, my name is Greg and you're watching Day Hiker from the Six. We've owned our Safari condo, Alto R1723 now for almost three years and our family of four has done several long trips in it, including a 5,000 mile tour through the Canadian Rockies. At just 17 feet long, and only 2,020 pounds dry, this teardrop is definitely small. But before we bought the trailer, we also did three long vacations in huge Class C RVs, so we think our analysis should be fair and balanced. Are we planning to upsize, or are we going to stick with our small camper? Stay tuned to find out. Two ground rules before we start. First, our Safari Condo is a small camper with an indoor toilet, shower, and kitchen. So this comparison is not about bed on wheels teardrops. If I'm gonna spend tens of thousands of dollars on an RV to replace my very affordable tent, then the RV is going to have to eliminate those awful middle of the night trips to campground toilets. Second, I'm making this video as someone, for now at least, who uses the RV for vacation travel and weekend warrior trips. If we were full timers, we'd probably value things like privacy and separate spaces more than we do now. But this video is definitely focused on the vacation slash weekend warrior use case. So with those two ground rules in mind, let's start by going through the pros of tiny travel trailers and then we'll look at the cons and then we'll tell you what we've decided. Pro number eight, more campsite choice. If you're like us, you want to camp as close as possible to the trailer monument that you've traveled to see. Think about it. When you're booking that state, provincial or national park campsite, the only mandatory filter is the size of your rig. The bigger your trailer or motorhome is, the less sites you fit into and the less sites you'll have to choose from. Plus, the Primo waterfront sites are often 21 feet and under, at least here in Ontario where we live. So if you want the best selection of sites, a tiny trailer is your best bet. Pro number seven, easier to position in campsites. If you're able to score that tight waterfront site, the smaller your rig is, the easier it will be to position in the way you want it. We're at our awesome Agawa Bay campsite. And what I wanted to show you was one of the big advantages of having a small trailer. So we wanted the door to be facing the lake. So because everything is so short, we can actually just pull in frontwards, disconnect the car, and then I'll just be able to back the car out. Uh, no problem. And I don't think if you had a big rig that you could pull this off. So just one of the advantages of a smaller trailer. And in a pinch, we can put the front wheel on the tongue and we can actually maneuver our trailer by hand. Don't try that with a huge 30 foot travel trailer. Pro number six, driving is still fun. With a 17 foot trailer, you can actually turn into a fast food parking lot without any worries and you can fit in any gas station or grocery store parking lot. You don't have to worry about clearances of underpasses and tunnels when you're on back roads. It's also easier to maintain your speed when you're going up big hills. Then there are the usual trailer advantages compared to motorized RVs. When you have a travel trailer, you don't hear the clanging of dishes and all your gear. You're separated from all that in your car or truck. And people sitting in the back, otherwise known as the kids, well, they get comfier seats, proper seat belts, it's safer and a much better view of the scenery in the car than they do in the motorhome. It all adds up to an on the road experience that's more relaxing and fun than driving a huge rig. Pro number five, it stays at the campsite. All right, yes, this is an advantage of all trailers, not just tiny ones. The beauty of a travel trailer is once you set up camp, you can go do your sightseeing in your tow vehicle without having to break camp. But with a tiny trailer, you can have a smaller tow vehicle, which will be easier to park, fits in any drive through and is more fun to drive. So even here, having a tiny trailer is better than a big one. And a smaller tow vehicle segues nicely into the next pro. Pro number four, better gas mileage. In our class C rentals, we got nine to 10 US miles per gallon, whereas we average between 14 and 16 miles per gallon when towing our tiny trailer. Heavy duty pickups can barely average 16 highway MPG when unloaded. But honestly, the biggest advantage is when we're not towing, which is actually the majority of the time we drive when you think about it. 19 US MPG is where most half-ton pickups sit on the highway. My car isn't very efficient as cars go. 
yet it gets 26 US MPG on the highway. That's a huge financial savings over the course of a year compared to a truck. But there are even more savings. Pro number three, tow vehicles are less expensive. If you pick the right small camper, you can get by with a small SUV or station wagon for a tow vehicle. In our case, we bought a used Toyota Venza with 3,500 pounds of tow capacity for only around 15,000 US dollars. The cheapest used mid-size pickup I could find in similar condition was more than double the price. Pro number two, no storage cost and hassle. Another place we save money, but more importantly, time, is by not having to store the trailer. Even though we live in the middle of the biggest city in Canada, we can store our trailer in our driveway. An eight foot wide trailer wouldn't even get into our driveway. And having the trailer here means if we score a last minute perfect campsite, we can just load her up and go. Plus, having the trailer at home makes our trailer rental business much easier to run. Pro number one, tiny trailers are less expensive. We've taken a lot of flack for the price of our camper in YouTube comments, but I feel like most of those naysayers have not gone RV shopping recently. Class Bs and Cs start around 70,000 in US dollars, and that would be for the ones you don't really want. Think 90 to 170 is the realistic price range for those rigs. And if you want a large premium trailer, you're looking at 60 to 70,000, but you may not get much better quality than a 30 foot trailer for around 30,000. So what's really the point? You can get an inexpensive small trailer for around 15 to 20,000, again in US dollars, and higher end composite rigs with independent suspension and premium appliances will set you back around 40 to 50 like ours. You can't find similar features in larger trailers until you get to Airstream, and we're not even gonna talk about their prices. The point is, at every quality level, small trailers are always the least expensive RV option. Having said all that, it's not all rainbows and roses when you buy a small trailer. There are some real disadvantages and let's look at them now. Con number four, storage issues. Straight up, small campers have less storage. And our rig has even less than the average small camper. Because of the curved retractable roof, there are no overhead cabinets. Plus, we only have one outdoor compartment because the air conditioner takes up the other one. When looking at the smallest and lightest campers, pay attention to the storage and ask yourself if it's enough for your camping style. In our case, we like to move around a lot and we don't actually spend much time in the campground, so we don't need to really bring a lot of stuff with us, and the lack of storage isn't such a big issue. And there is a silver lining to this con. A tiny trailer, it really forces you to decide what you're gonna bring and pack minimally, and that means you have less clutter on your campsite. It's a lot quicker to set up and tear down, and you actually have more time just to relax and enjoy the camping experience. Con number three, smaller tanks. Our trailer has only 16 gallons of fresh and gray and 12 gallons of black water. We've adapted to the size of our trailer's tanks by going back to our tent camping processes, which has actually made our camping feel more like camping. It's actually nicer this way. We don't shower in the trailer and instead we use campground showers, although we even did that with the bigger our class C's, and we'll dump our dishwater in the campground pit toilets. Safari Condo actually increased the tank sizes for 2024, and there are plenty of tiny campers with fairly large tanks. So this con varies from tiny camper to camper. Con number two, less privacy. Most tiny campers are one room rigs. So if you really want or need a separate bedroom, for example, it would really narrow down the number of small campers you could look at. There are some out there though. You could also consider this as a pro because nothing brings a family together like a tiny RV. If we were full-timing with kids, this would be a much bigger issue than it is for us on our vacation travels. Con number one, space is tight. On mornings where it's pouring rain outside, we have to be strategic about who gets up first, when people get dressed, and so on. Obviously, in a large trailer or motorhome, this would be a non-issue. So far in our camping experience, though, this is like one day in ten. Usually dad and mom are up and having coffee at the picnic table long before the teenagers even think about rising. So that's it for the cons, and we're more than willing to accept those cons to gain the eight advantages we talked about earlier, especially since we still have a toilet, a shower, comfy large beds, and a place to hang out in a store. By now you've probably guessed, and our conclusion is that we don't want to upsize our trailer. Our small camper is perfect for our needs and our camping style of mainly staying in rustic parks without hookups where we spend the entire day outdoors. What do you think? 
Are you ready to train in your large rig for something smaller and more nimble? Let me know in the comments below. And if you're curious about how we manage RVing gear given the tiny outdoor storage on our trailer, click on this video here. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe for more content about our family's RVing adventures. Take care and we'll see you on the next one.